the word today is the revelation behind your name. Some of you have names you have, you carry, you are named, or maybe you don't know the revelation of how a name can impact your life. A name you carry can impact your life positively or negatively. Sometimes we just wake up, we're like, well, we give ourselves nicknames, or maybe somebody gave you a nickname you walk with. But before I go to that, I want to share something. A woman who's 103 years old, this young neighbor, he's a young man, he goes and speaks to this young woman. No, I say young woman, an old woman, I'm saying young. <laughs> and she asks this old 103-year-old woman, how comes you look like you're in your 70s? What's the secret? You don't even look like that age. You know what the lady said? The old lady responded and said, the reason why I look young is because I forgive. I forgive all my life. I never held grudges. When you hold grudges, this is what the lady said, it weighs on your spirit and it reflects on your face. And she said, it's not age that makes you old. It's the people you carry. It's the souls you have not forgiven. Some of us, we struggle. We say, hey, like, am I supposed to use whatever? Am I supposed to dress? It's beyond how you look physically. It's how you look spiritually. Amen. Do you know you're a spiritual being having an earthly experience? Amen. The eyes are the windows to your, to your heart, to your soul. So you're looking at me with your physical eyes, but it's your spirit that's looking at me. Your soul is looking at me. So today I want you to take time. Forgive anybody who you're holding. It might be your grandma, your mother, your father, your grandpa. Forgive them. I don't know who you're holding, but it's messing with your glory. There's no surgery. There's nothing that can change how you look until you learn how to let go of people. When you carry people in your heart, it gives you heart conditions. <laughs> heart beats. Your heart beats with pain. Sometimes you feel like you're out of breath. Some of us cannot sleep properly because you have a lot of baggage in your heart. You carry people. Resentment. How dare the audacity. Me? The Bible says forgive. I want you to forgive. Who are you holding on to? It could be your own child. Forgive them. That will preserve you. Let go and let God. It might be a friend you are with or you are around who was close to you but now turned and betrayed you. Forgive. Yeah. The power of forgiveness is real. You are free. Do you know even Buddhists and those who worship other deities, they believe, they know the revelation behind forgiving. But we believers, uh-uh. We're like, nah, I deserve the right to be treated right. How dare you, the audacity. Why you keep doing the same thing? Let people go. Be like a child. Children fight and the next day they play. Not even the next day. After two hours, they play. Why are you holding too much in your heart? You know, before I taught this word, I was in prayer. The Lord told me, before you give this word, Deliver this word because there's a lot of weight in the spirit. I said, why am I feeling heavy as we're worshiping? The Lord told me, it's not you. There's weight. Somebody is carrying weight. And the weight has got to go. Okay? It's not going to hurt you to love. Why don't you want to love? Love. I want you to love. I want you to love and see the power of love. The power of love goes beyond you loving someone who loves you. If you love somebody who loves you, <laughs> there's no reward in that. But love somebody who's difficult to love. And then you'll see what God will do for you. That's true love. When somebody is difficult to love, like, you know, crazy character, attitude, you can't stand them. Yeah. Then love them. <laughs> you know, I'm prophetically teaching. <laughs> so don't think when I look at you too much, it's like, hey, is he talking about <laughs> Maybe. Nah, I'm joking. 
I just want to laugh. I don't know. I want to control myself. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have stress. You don't have insomnia. What you have is a baggage. The doctor will tell you it's insomnia. Believe me. <laughs> it's a baggage. You go on your phone, you see how this sister is doing or this brother is doing. They're doing better than you. Or they look, you feel like they look better than you. So you look at the phone, you feel like crying. So it puts you in a bad mood, <laughs> social media. And we forget there is filters. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, filters are good, but they are dangerous. <laughs> You're like, dang, uh-uh. <laughs> they don't look like that. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when you compare your life to someone else's life, you'll hate yourself. You know, some of us hate, not all of us. We struggle with self-love because we compare our life to someone else. How they're doing financially. Dang, this woman moved on quick. Already got married, I'm still stuck alone. <laughs> or like, dang, already bought the property, I'm still in the same spot. So you start looking online and you might not know it, but later on it hits you like an arrow in your heart. So your spirit is afflicted. And now you're not happy. You see, I was telling the Lord recently, I said, Lord, if you can make me <laughs> take back the time and make me like this one, <laughs> small like this, like, oh my God. It's beyond the bills, eh? It's beyond paying bills. The level of peace. You laugh, you don't know why you're laughing. You're happy, you're happy, you're happy for real. Yeah. I heard something. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I thought I'm hearing my thing. Is it, is it the angel singing or what? I say, I say what? <laughs> Happiness is for a season. Joy is a gift. Amen. Most of you here are happy. Entertainment makes you happy. A good movie makes you happy. Your burger... Your fries, your favorite pizza, <laughs> makes you, puts you in a good mood. You're happy, because now you're full. Your gut is full. Praise God. Now you're smiling. Some of you might not smile really <coughs> properly until uh, lunch hits. <laughs> Praise God. When it's lunch, that's when you smile. You're happy. Yeah. Some of you, food makes you happy. Yeah. The worms are making noise there. Ah, they're fighting. Let's go, man, soldiers. There's nothing in the gut. Praise God. <laughs> Some of you, your boyfriends, your girlfriends make you happy. Praise God. Am I speaking? Oh, why are everybody quiet? <laughs> oh, praise God. <laughs> I mean, I'm being too sensitive. God forgive me. Hmm? <laughs> what is making you happy? But what is happiness? Happiness is for a season. It's a season. It's a short season. Sometimes it's beyond a season. It's just sometimes it's minutes. Sometimes it's two hours. You're watching something, you know, that's making you happy. Wow, cool, series. People are pursuing happiness but they're forgetting to pursue joy. Joy is a gift. You need joy. Amen. The Bible talks about how many fruits? Nine. Nine fruits of the Spirit. One of them is joy. You need joy. Amen. Right now, you can leave this service. Somebody's going to make you happy. All right? Saying, I got you for lunch. I don't know why I'm talking about lunch a lot. Hey, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> is this, didn't somebody eat breakfast today? Praise God. Anyway, God is going to feed you. Amen? Praise God. I'm serious. God will feed you supernaturally. Hmm. Amen. Father, give them the gift of joy. Amen. Teach your children how to forgive, Lord. Teach them not to walk with a heavy burden that causes them not to concentrate. Teach them how to have joy, God. Teach your children. Pray, I pray for the gift of joy tonight, today. 
I thank you for the miracles that are already happening in their life. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise, God. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Are you ready tonight? Yes. Are you ready for the word? Yes. The word tonight is the revelation of names. The revelation of names. Or the revelation behind who you are. Your true identity. Now, some of you are living a false identity. Mark this. Not all of you. Some of you are living a wrong reality. A reality that's not really reality. It's a false reality. And God spoke to me about this word while I was sleeping. And he said, deliver this word. A name can carry a blessing or a name can carry a curse. Some of you might be, well, I don't believe in curses. Curses are not real. Generational curses are not real. But I'm here to tell you there is generational blessings and there is generational curses. Do you know there are people who never have to even wake up early in the morning to go to work? Because there's what we call a generational wealth. <laughs> they, they're the ones we see online skydiving, praise God. <laughs> they have time to start skydiving. I want to do something fun. Woo! They fly. Praise God. They have time to hike. Okay, if you hike, bless you. Maybe you created a, a schedule. Some people don't live with schedule. Oh, you're not understanding what I mean. If there's, there are people, they take breakfast in Italy and lunch in France. Did you hear what I said? There are folks who take breakfast in Italy, lunch in France, Paris. But you, you're trying to find the right restaurant. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Uh, oh, you cook your, oh, praise God. <laughs> At least you cook in your house. Amen? Did you hear what I said? There is someone who does not wake up with a clock. The clock alarm is for, for you. You know, if it doesn't ring, there's problems. <laughs> what is that? If the alarm doesn't ring, there's a problem. <laughs> but there's someone who does not know how the alarm sounds. They sleep all the night. <laughs> all through, beyond even the night, they sleep at five. And they wake up at two. And after they wake up, they go to the pool, they take a dive, and they swim. And after they swim, <laughs> they're like, I think I should go to Rome, the Coliseum. Take a flight, first class, Rome. Easy. They're free. They've gone to Rome. And after Rome, they're like, I don't think I like the Coliseum. This is a reality of people who live amongst us who do this. They're like, I don't like the way the private jet looks, it feels. We need to get to upgrade and get a better one with better seats. And this is a private jet. You are struggling with economy, praise God. There's someone who's trying to upgrade their, <laughs> their jet. But you are struggling with what? Your economy. Should I fly spirit? <laughs> Okay, let's fly spirit. Hey, by the way, if you fly spirit, may God deliver you. If you are here, you fly spirit, may the Lord deliver you. That, that is a bus. Uh, no, 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 even a bus is good. Spirit, spirit Airlines is a horse. Praise God. Who has experienced trauma with Spirit Airlines? <laughs> oh, praise God. May that never happen to you again. <laughs> so, there are people who don't struggle at all. And you wonder like, is it just because the dad made good choices? What is it? How comes these people sleep in and they sleep out and they laugh, they just full of joy. They're the ones blogging online. They're the ones who have time online to show you, oh, this is Tokyo, I'm in Tokyo, guys. Oh man, look at me, I'm in Tokyo, woo -wee. They're laughing. They're so excited. They're in Tokyo having a good time. And after Tokyo, you see them in New York City, Times Square, just taking pictures. And some of you have desired this life. And you're like, dang, I'm tired of living. I feel like I want to die. Some of you have considered suicide before. Oh, God, I'm tired of this life. Because you live on the clock. You don't live to control time. Time controls you. Did you hear what I said? You're a slave to time. 
And God gave us the grace and he wants each one of us to control time, not to be slaves of time. When you are a slave of time, if you don't do what time says, you're gone. You're done. And it's over. Praise God. Amen. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I'm not going to be a slave of time. I'm going to be in control of my time, my schedule, every decision I make prophetically. I'll take charge in the spirit. In the spirit. Amen. Praise God. So that is generational blessings. Whether they are believers or not, they are blessed physically with material blessings. They have it. Somebody had to do something. The Bible says a good father lives in inheritance what? His children, right? His children's children. It's a generational thing, right? But there is also a revelation where, where you need to be and what you need to do in the spirit. This is the revelation I want to teach. There's a solution for things like that. Whereby you don't have to live for tomorrow. Tomorrow lives for you. So the sermon tonight is the revelation behind your name. Who are you? I said, I said, uh, there is gener generational blessings and there is generational curses. Curses are real. Curses are things that repeat themselves. You see it in your children. The exact thing grandpa did, you see your kid doing. Yep. And you say, oh, it's just like grandpa is the DNA. It's not the DNA. It's a familiar spirit. Be as exactly like his grandpa. Talks exactly, exact words until you're like, hey. Some of you have seen this in your grandchildren if you are here and you have grandchildren. They exactly like your dad, even the same words. And so now you think, mm, is it because it's blood? It's beyond blood. It's a spiritual thing. It's spiritual than physical. Amen. So there's generational blessings and curses. Tonight I'm dealing with names. See, Jacob and Esau were twins, and something had to happen uh, for two of them, you know, for Jacob to fully get into his identity. In the womb they fought, Jacob and Esau. There was a war in the womb. And when they were born, Esau's blessings were taken by Jacob. Jacob stole the blessings of Esau by tricking him with a bowl of soup. And that's what we call generational blessings. Meaning the father Isaac followed a tradition whereby he had to bless in the, in the Jewish culture. The firstborn had to be blessed, received the blessing. So the one who ended up receiving the blessing is the lastborn, the youngest twin. You know, there's the old twin and the young twin. But something had to happen. Praise God. Praise God. Rebecca had to be involved. And she told the young one, go and make soup. Do what you have to do and get the blessing of the firstborn. The father required the blessing to be handed over. But the mother had a revelation the father was too blind to see. So there was corruption. And Jacob ended up being blessed after he presented the soup. He had to make fake skin from an animal, a goat, a uh, sheep. And the blessing fell on him. And Esau came back from hunting to present his blessing, but the blessing was already gone had been passed on to Jacob. But after Jacob received the blessing, there was war. Esau lost his mind. He wants to kill his brother. If I don't kill you, Esau, I'm not me. So he's after Jacob's life. Esau is after Jacob's life. Why? Because Jacob stole the blessing. And Rebecca and Jacob are talking, and Jacob talks to his mother. He says, what if something happens? He says, let the curse fall on me. That's what Rebecca said. Let it fall on me. But you go get it. Go get it. The mother was able to see. Praise God. Amen. 
The father wants to bless, but he has no revelation. The one who has the revelation is Rebecca. Because <laughs> she knew what she experienced in the womb. That this one, this one, this first one, if he's given the benediction, there's going to be a problem in the spiritual realm. Amen. Say Jesus. Jesus. So there's war. Twins want to kill each other. Twins want to kill each other. All right? The firstborn twin is after the youngest. The youngest flees, goes. Praise God. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus touch, me now. touch me now. Increase me. Increase. Do, something new Do something new in my life. In my life. Give, me Give me revelation of who I am. Of who I am. Change me, my name, my identity, my situation, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, Jacob becomes a blessing, but it's not done yet. It's not done. It's not over. It's not over yet. The, still, the name still he carries as Jacob is a problem. The name he carries as Jacob is a problem. So he's in front of God, and at night, midnight, Jacob wrestles with God, and he says, until you change my name, I'm not doing nothing till you change my name. He wrestles with an angel of God. He wrestles with an angel of God until his name, Jacob, is changed to what? Israel, a nation. Yeah. So his name was again changed from Jacob to Israel. Israel means new beginning. The Lord is going to give you a new beginning today. Amen. I'm talking about names and the revelation behind names. Some of us have been named after celebrities. Maybe your mother saw a celebrity, Elvis Presley. Yes, Elvis, Elvis. Huh? They called you Elvis. You don't know the depression Elvis faced and the confusion, the drugs. Your mother loved Elvis. Oh, I love Elvis. Oh, your mother saw, okay, let me name you after my ex. Boom. Praise God. Oh, okay, okay, I don't want to be too much. <laughs> let, me, let me take it easy. Praise God. I, I'm going a little bit sensitive here. <laughs> I don't want to be too sensitive. <laughs> Lord, let me take it easy. Because <laughs> I was going a little bit fast. <laughs> Let's give it time. <laughs> oh, your name behind the name. Diana Rose, you know, Diana, I like Diana. I liked her. I watched her a lot. Diana, oh my God, Diana, boom. <laughs> the child carries the name Diana. Every name has a personality. And every name has a spirit behind it. See, the name John can be good. If there's a revelation behind the name John, why your name John? According to the scripture. But if that name is John, your name John because of your grandpa, and you don't really know the life your grandpa lived, and you're named after him, you'll face the same consequences because names have personalities and they carry spirits behind them. Yeah. That's good. Come on. A, name, a name can carry an identity. It carries a personality. That's why there are certain names when you hear. They speak big volume. Mm. Yeah. Praise God. Names have an identity. Names can define you in the spirit. That's what the Bible says, at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. He shall be called Emmanuel, wonderful counselor. The angel had to deliver the name. Before John the Baptist was born, Elizabeth was visited. She had a visitation. Zachariah has an encounter with the angel and the angel tells him the name shall be John. Zachariah is confused. Oh, he wants to speak. He became mute. He became deaf. Until John was born. To show you that name was not supposed to be spoken of. So the name you carry has a revelation. Amen. The name you carry can carry a blessing or can carry a curse. The name you carry can carry a blessing or a curse. Some of the names we have might have been names 
we love. We enjoy the name. It looks good. It sounds good to your ear. But what's the revelation behind it? I know every Diana. Praise God. There are many Dianas I know. Hallelujah. <laughs> there are many rubies I know. Praise God. But I don't want to go there. Hallelujah. Let God deliver you. Let God change your name tonight. Amen. Let God give you the revelation of a new identity so that you may make the right decisions tonight. Amen. You need a new identity with the right decisions tonight. The Lord is doing something tonight. I need you to pray. Amen. New identity. <laughs> I love the Lord. <laughs> ah, the Lord is so good. Amen. Say new identity. New identity. New name. New name. Set me free, God. Who am I? Who am I? Reveal, to me Reveal to me so that I make the right decisions, so make the right decisions. In, Jesus mighty name. in Jesus mighty name. So if you carry the name of your grandma, who was your grandma? I want to ask you that question. Who was your grandma? Oh, wait. Oh, oh Jesus. Uh, <laughs> praise God. I did not know if that's going to come. Oh, but praise the Lord, you know. At least you're honest. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sometimes we say, I know my mama. I know my dad was. He was a good man. He was a good man, but do you know him? Do you really know him? You know, kids don't know their parents. Don't, let, don't, don't be fooled that you know your mom. <laughs> There's a portion of life you don't know about her before you existed. A portion of things of what she did that you never knew. So you just name somebody because, oh, I'm this junior, oh, I'm this junior, and you name. And you don't know why you're going through a lot physically. It's because you just picked up a name. Oh, they called me that because of this, this, this. And you wonder like, mm, why are you always having issues with relationship? Their names. <laughs> Let me give you an example. A lady came and, uh, and I looked at her and I said, hi, how are you? She said, fine. He said, um, is a problem with your name, your last name? She looked at me, she said, okay, explain to me, like, what do you mean my last name? She's being all logical. I said, who are you named after? She said, my auntie. Who was your auntie? I mean, she was just there. How was your relationship with your auntie and mother? Nah, they were always fighting, but she was good to me. But I asked her, did your auntie ever settle in any relationship? Was she ever stable in any relationship? She said, no. She was, she was from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship. She couldn't be in one relationship. And I said, good. So that's the last name you carry. He said, yes. Are you in a relationship? No. I said, okay, good. I understand. And I asked her, what happens in your life? The same thing happens. And she began crying. From relationship to relationship. like She can't even count. She can't be still in one relationship. We all desire to do certain things, but it's beyond our control. You desire to do or make certain decisions, but you can't make these decisions. Why? Sometimes it's beyond you. Sometimes it's a stronghold. It's a pattern. Familiar spirits are real. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit as believers, Amen. but anybody who does not have the Holy Spirit as a believer, you have a familiar spirit. A familiar spirit is a spirit that traces down your bloodline. It's familiar to everything where you come from, your genealogy. She behaves like a grandma. There's nothing like behaving because of blood. Everybody has a different personality. Oh, it's blood. It's because we are related. Who told you? If you behave like someone, I mean, you, must, you, might, you might as well look, at, look like them 100%. You might as well be their twin. Why do you look different? Why do you look different? Because God made you different. Amen. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Touch me tonight. Touch me tonight. Help me walk in peace. Help me walk in peace. Not in confusion. Not in confusion. You see your kids you're raising. You see the baby. You know, 
this child, this little baby has a personality. Amen. Needs to have what we call an independent personality from God. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> Even the baby's understanding better. You guys are looking at me. Oh, praise God. <laughs> okay. The baby's doing, yes. That's why I love children. Praise God. Innocence. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> Innocent like this one. Mm. She feels it, but you are looking. Eyeballs. Ah, come on. <laughs> Just say, man, feel it, huh? So if this child grows <laughs> and is at a certain age, and the name the child has is inspired either by a celebrity or by a, a family member you loved but you don't know, praise God, you don't know their trial, you don't know what they went through, you are actually giving the identity yeah. of somebody who died, who you never knew half of the life they lived to this child. It's an example I'm giving. Oh, I sound, I like this name, it sounds good. My best friend was named this. But the issue is, you don't know your best friend's other life. That's private. Some people even name their friends. Their friend's name, on, you see your friend, you name your friend the same name as uh, your daughter. Or your, oh, because my best friend was called Camila. Okay, now this child is Camila. Do you know Camila? Names have personalities. Amen. Even demons have names. Do you think demons, <laughs> there is uh, demons, they're called legion. There's, there's different names. Angels, if Angel Michael is Angel Michael, we know his name is what? Michael. If Angel Gabriel is Angel Gabriel, we know his name is Angel what? Gabriel. So it's the same thing with you. The question I want to ask you tonight or today, very simple, who are you? Yeah. You keep saying, I'm, I'm tired of struggling. I have depression. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Too many thoughts in my mind. Some of you are struggling with even insanity. Okay, let me break this down. Insanity is not when you're locked into the mental institution. No. Oh, let the Lord deliver you today. Me, I pray that God delivers you today. I'm not teaching you this to scare you. Insanity is when you can't put your thoughts together. You are scattered. You're here, you're there. You're here, you're there. There's something wrong right here Amen. with your soul. And you need deliverance. All these things begin with what? Names. In the Bible, you will see a woman crying. And she names her child Sorrow. Because when she was barren, the child came in a time where she was going through a lot. So the child is called Sorrow. They knew, the Hebrews knew their identity. The name, the revelation of names. Abraham's name was Abram. It became Abraham. Sarah's name was Sariah. It became Sarah. Saul's name, which was Apostle Paul in the New Testament. His name was Saul. He was from the tribe of what? Benjamin. He was from the tribe of King Saul. Do you know the disciples of Jesus came from the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel? Like Judas Iscariot, was from the tribe of Judah. That's why his name was Judas, es Judas Iscariot. So Jesus had somebody from his own tribe betray. Wow. Oh, let me say something. Saul in the Bible, say Jesus. Jesus. Saul in the Bible, who was killing Christians, killing, killing, killing. He came from the tribe of Benjamin, which was King Saul's what? Tribe. So he had the same characteristics as King Saul. Killing, killing. He loved murdering. So God looks at him and counters him on the road to Damascus. Pa, he sees the light. And immediately God looks at him. He changes his name to what? Saul to Paul. So we read about Apostle Paul in the Bible in the New Testament. But his actual name was what? Saul. But what was his DNA? What was his gene genealogy? His genealogy comes from Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin. So there's the tribe of Judah. There's the tribe of Judah. Oh, if you. There's the tribe of Judah. And uh, she can go in the, in the other room, office. There's the tribe of Judah. There's the tribe of Benjamin. Praise God. Amen. So God touches you tonight. What is your name? In the Bible, we know names. Names have a big meaning, have a lot of 
revelation. Say, Jesus, touch me tonight. Jesus, touch me tonight. Change my situation, Change my, situation. My, name, my name, my identity. My identity. I, bind I bind every spirit, every spirit of, confusion of confusion in the mighty name of Jesus. In, name of Jesus. in my mind, in my, mind my, heart, my heart, my body, my body. Set, me set me free from anxiety, from anxiety. Confusion, confusion in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So your name has a meaning, has a meaning. Don't be fooled as you're walking around. Every one of you, your name has something behind it. Amen. Your name carries something behind it. Listen, whether you believe what I'm saying or you wait for a couple of years to see or find out, if you're wise enough, <laughs> you will pray God to deliver you. Amen. If your name has a blessing behind it, keep it like that. If you know it carries a blessing behind it, there's no spirit behind it, <laughs> glorify God. Amen. If it came with a revelation of God, glorify God. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall see. Why does he confess? He says, every tongue shall confess. Now he said, at the name of who? Jesus Christ. He says, at the name, angel Gabriel appears to Mary. He says, he shall be called what? Wonderful counselor. Jesus. Amen. Emmanuel. <laughs> he shall be called John the Baptist bath the same revelation he shall be called John Johanna say Jesus Jesus I love you I love you touch me touch me increase me tonight, increase me tonight. so tonight I'm not preaching I want to talk to you <coughs> praise God don't be afraid don't be afraid. Fear is what paralyzes you to discover who God called you to be. Anytime you face fear or you feel fear, it's not God, it's the enemy. In the world they call it bad energy. I call it evil spirits. As I'm even delivering these words to you, there's a battle in the spiritual realm whether you see it physically or not, but in the spirit world, you gotta know something. There's the angelic realm and there's the demonic realm and there's a battle for your soul. There's a reason why you came tonight, this specific night. God wants to change your identity. Why are you repeating what your dad did? Why are you doing the exact thing that your dad did? Why are you doing what your grandma did? The exact characteristics and you wonder like, oh my God. Or you look at your daughter, you're like, she's exactly like my aunt. And you think it's DNA. Investigate this in the spirit. Let the Lord reveal to you who you truly are. Just like your fingerprint is different. Amen. From everyone here, you are different. You're very different. Amen. Just like your fingerprint is different from each one of you here. That's how you're unique and different. Lord, touch your children tonight. Increase them, God. I bind every confusion in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I was driving through Compton. And when I drove through Compton, I asked the Lord, why are you making me drive through? Why are you making me drive through Compton? You know. The Lord said, just take a drive to Compton. <laughs> I see, I see. This is suspect here, God. Am I supposed to pray for some people or what's going to happen here? Because the way I'm dressed is not looking good. You know, if you know what I mean. I'm dressed red and blue. Praise God. So why am I feeling a lot of fear? Why are you making me drive through here, red and blue? I've thought about your name, right? The Lord is taking me to another total different, a little bit different topic. I don't know why I feel somebody needs to hear this. 